Welcome to Backboard Banter on the board with your hosts, Matt Middleton and Kevin Rayner. We're the banter's ass ferocious as messy at FIFA this year. My man has been playing out of his mind. And come on, man. Mbappe, just, just give it to him, bro. You've already got one. You're so young. You got so many more chances. Just give it to Messi. We all want it for Messi. All things considered, it's, it's been, a world, been a World Cup that people have enjoyed. You know, there's been some banger goals. There's been some good storylines. England, once again, has faltered when they think that they should have won. But finals around the corner. It's going to be exciting. And, you know, the Canadian fans in us over here, we're a little bit happier. You know, we watched Croatia. We watched Morocco go pretty deep into this tournament. So we don't feel as bad as we did a couple weeks ago. Or a week ago, Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. I mean, when... You know, the top two teams in your group go to the quarters and the semis. Like, you can't really be too upset about it. Um, it proves that, you know, Canada was probably right there with the rest of the world. And had we had a different group, a different draw, we we might have been able to, to get out and advance into the knockout stages. But you know what? We're going to host it here in North America between the U.S., Mexico, and Canada next time. And I'm just excited about that because Canada is definitely in that one. As as a host country, we just automatically get get in, which is crazy because there's three, which is like that's unheard of. But hey, whatever. The system, They'll the do system it. Is, is being cheated somehow. It's working. And you know, <laughs> Canadians over here, we like when we host things on soil. You know, everyone still loves the golden goal from Crosby in 2010 in Vancouver. So you know, we're not going to expect too much from the boys, but we'll be pretty hyped four years from now to get to see it. You know, hopefully Definitely. rinse and repeat, but a better result next time around. yeah and you know man the world juniors is in halifax this year hopefully the boys come home with another gold like they did last year hey -o. so this team's looking stacked it's an exciting time for all sports in canada but you know we're talking about basketball here we're gonna get into the raptors later it has been not great you know we're basically a sinking ship with constantly new holes that are showing up and as we plug them they just keep showing up more so we're just we're bailing our way out, but who knows over here if we're going to find success. So, yeah, we'll get into the Raptors chat in a little bit, but let's return to these takes, my friend. Yeah, man. I mean, your Nets, um, they beat us, unfortunately, Oof. after that call. It is what it is. We have them again tonight, so maybe we get the revenge. Uh, hopefully we do, because since, you know, you called that Detroit win, we have been just downright awful. <laughs> Yeah, the boys have really been on a downward trend. And yeah, that Nets game, Katie didn't even need, he didn't even need like 20 points. I'm pretty sure he had like 22 or something to beat us. So that was a tough take for me. And, you know, we, we talk about football a little bit here. This guy with his take, you almost had it, man. You were telling me that you pretty much should have come out with the victory on all three of those calls, but it just couldn't happen. The Jets blew it against the Vikings. They definitely should have beat the Vikings. Um, the Washington New York Giants game ended 2020. You could have, you know, could have gone either way. Somebody could have kicked a field goal in overtime just to win. Come on, somebody do it. Um, and then the, the Steelers, man. My Steelers came through against Atlanta. I knew they were better than Atlanta. Um, Mike Tomlin, man, he's he's got them pushing for a 500 record. Not that they're going to get there. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it. it Football's a tough one, man. And week in, week out, you have no idea what to expect, and it's it's a crapshoot this year. I mean, right? Like, Brady got his soul snatched by Mr. Irrelevant this week as well, so time is crazy in the NFL. <laughs> Dude, I think on one of our earlier episodes, like in the first season, when... Tom Brady goes to the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay, and you know, you tell us that story about how he <laughs> snatched this like all time prospects, you know, soul. Maybe Brock Purdy just did it to him. The man is 3 0 so far since he's been in the game. I 2 0 as a starter. He won the Miami game, taking over for Jimmy Garoppolo, and has looked great. And everybody's saying that their offense looks better with him than without Jimmy G. So Crazy. it's just. It's hilarious, man. Um, if you're a fan of first things first, like Nick Wright just loving himself right now and, and loving the, the take that Jimmy Garoppolo is not a good quarterback, and he's he's quite quite accurate. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's always fun to watch those storylines, and yeah, you know, when you're the GOAT, everyone's going to try to steal your crown, and I mean, we saw Brady come from nothingness, you know, from being as far back as he was to being where he was, you know. Mr. Irrelevant being that last pick, that could be, you know, the, the juice that gets this guy going. And pretty exciting to see the victory over there. I was pretty amped when you were going off texting me about it. Dude, it was awesome. It was it was absolutely awesome. But, you know, we're not here to talk about football, man. Like you said, we want to talk about our Raptors. They have not had a great stretch since we, you know, last took off. You were off last week because you were sick. Um, so they were 2-5. and five. 
since we've last talked. Pain. Pain. Bro, right? We lost back to back to Orlando. <laughs> it's it's you know I I'm looking ahead you know at the next ten games and I'm like wow our stretch is difficult but when you look you know at the past section of games you realize that. We should have taken better advantage of this stretch. The back-to-back -back losing to Orlando is so painful, but it really, it's a combination of so many things right now. And I want to start with Fred, right? Because he's been good. He's not been great, right? Obviously, the, having the game that he had, they should have had that W against this Kings team. But as the quote-unquote leader of this squad, Fred needs to be better. He really does. He has not been the same as he was last year. And I don't know if it's because last year was his first true year of full usage, you know, and Nick rode him into the ground, right? Like so bad that he couldn't play in the playoffs. And then this year, you know, you, you do have a full off season, but he's, he's coming back. He's still a little bruised up, maybe still a little fatigued from the season that he just put put, put his body through. And he just doesn't seem to be at the same level as he was mm -hmm. last year. And it's it's really sad to see his three-point mechanics are off is what he's saying. He's saying that normally when he shoots threes, he's either short or long, but he's never offline. And now he's offline and he can't figure out why. And it's just not good for a team where he's literally our only reliable three-point shooter Honestly. on a consistent basis. Like, it's it's so atrocious to think that the league average for three-pointers in a game is 12, and we can't break seven. You know? It's, it's just disgusting. Man, I remember when the Raptors had, I don't know, they probably still have this promotion, where you get free French fries do, from yeah. McDonald's if you hit, they hit, what, 12, 12. three-pointers? You know, I'm thinking, league out. League out. I'm thinking back to 2019. I'm thinking back to even our bubble season. I was like, you know, I probably could have cashed in those free fries a decent amount. Ain't happening these days, that's for sure. You were talking about this Kings game with Terrence Davis hitting five and us hitting six. Like, we need to be Bro, did you watch any of the Will Lou content? I missed it. On the Raptors. So they were week. talking about that, about yeah. the fries promotion. And apparently, we're on pace to have like 27 of those games this year where McDonald's has to give out free fries. So where we hit league yeah. average three-point shooting, like or three-pointers made. Last year and like the year before, we were on pace for like 50 plus, 60 plus. Well, and it's is. just, yeah, it's night and day difference, man. And then the fact that like, we didn't improve our rim protection at all. Like, I still really like Christian Coloco, and I think he's a good player. He's too young. I think he should be in the G League, man. I, I think that the, the fact that he's in the NBA is a glaring problem with our team. True. He can't stay on the court. He fouls out way too consistently that if you could put him in the G League where he could maybe impose himself a little bit more, get to learn a little bit more about the intricacies of NBA-style defense, maybe he wouldn't have as many fouls in the NBA because because he's learning in the G League, but we don't, we can't even afford him that opportunity because we literally have nobody else to play the center position. Who are we going to get? Barnes, Siakam, or OG? Like, all of those guys are way too undersized at this point. It's a tough situation, right? And you've already nailed it on the money. Our biggest struggles as a team are our three point shooting and our true rim defense. I miss the days of Gasol. I miss the days of Ibaka, you know, undersized Ibaka doing what he was able to do as a rim protector. And like, yeah, Siakam's been good, right? He's been as good as he can be trying to be the all-around star for our team. But there's a reason why the Jakob Pertl rumors are heating up right now. Because, yeah, we need a center to make it so that Coloco doesn't have to be constantly going up against these smart, trained NBA veterans who know how easy it is to get a young rookie into foul trouble early. Because he's just not, he doesn't have enough, you know, underneath him. He hasn't he's had enough season. games. Exactly. Yeah, so. he's... He's like Siaka, man. He yeah. only picked it up when he was 17 years old, right? Like, he's five years into his basketball playing career. You know, some guys at 12 years old are already five years into their career at 10 years old, you know? And so he's got a lot of runway out here for him to, you know, pick up and develop the intricacies. And that's, again, like, why I think he should be in the G League, man. And then, like... The thing is, is like we lose to Orlando in back-to-back -back games, and then we lose to the Kings as well in that th in this three-game losing stretch, and we have such a competitive game with Boston in the first half. We were yeah. 
with them every step of the way we were hounding them they were hounding and like og man was absolutely on fire and then he kind of fell off in the second and our team just flat out gets destroyed they rolled over and it's oh it's it's so sad to see my friend and i don't i just looking at this week right and realizing that we got a an early w against the magic from forever ago two weeks ago and if it wasn't for that Lakers free W where there was no LeBron and no AD, we're looking at a potentially 0-7 week from the boys where everything has just been falling apart. And yes, a couple of injuries here and there. Yes, we miss Precious as a rotational piece. We can't forget that this man has missed 16 games. I didn't realize how many games has passed since Precious has actually been out. But, you know, we are not a team that has an aggressive amount of depth. And so we need our players to play when they can play. And... We're in a tough place right now. Well, I think I would disagree with you in the specific position that Precious plays. We lack some depth on the bigger size. Like, we lack that center depth that he plays because that's where he, where he kind of really gets the majority of his minutes is in mm-hmm. that position. But, like, when you talk about a 6'9", 6'10", player, like, bro, that's our whole roster. We got Thad Young. We got friggin', like, I, do I have to go through all of them again? No. Oh, you you, like, we've got... We're the six nine experiment, right? Yeah. So, I I I don't love the fact that we're using precious and you know the the couple of rotational injuries that have gone throughout the season where you know guys have missed one or two games here or there as an excuse for why we're this bad. Because if you look at all of the teams in the NBA, they're they've all missed key contributors at some point. They've all had major injuries, and they they're fighting through it. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of crazy to think about it, and I know a lot of people are talking about it, but, like, is this showing that Nick Nurse maybe isn't a developmental coach? Maybe he's a front-runner coach. Maybe he needs the, the, the put-together final team in order to then figure it out. He can't elevate the talent that he has. He can just make sure that the talent that he has is going to lock in. It's why the fan you know? base has turned from optimism at the beginning of the season to now optimism with a side of panic. Nobody really just wants to freak out yet, right? We're, we're at this point where we know that there is potential. I know you're freaking out. I mean, I'm, I'm still talking about the side of the fan base that is maybe a little bit not ready to accept the place where we are, but... Not watching the games? <laughs> <laughs> like, Come on. There, is, there is potential, yes. We know this with the roster, but there's shooting issues. There's chemistry issues. There's so many little things, and it's why I made the comment about how we're a sinking ship just with constant holes everywhere that we just cannot seem to fix, and your coach is supposed to be the solution for a lot of that. Your coach is supposed to be the guy that pulls them together, and yes, we've praised Nurse constantly. He's a fantastic X's and O's chess match type of coach. He's great for the playoffs, but right now, we're a rebuilding team who is trying to figure out how to consistently stay in that playoff race, not how to win a championship, so... I understand where you're coming from. Like, last year, man, like, we were a developmental team for every sense of the word. We just had the fourth overall pick. We had the seventh worst record in the NBA. People had projected us for 34 wins. Okay? hard. Okay? And And that's great, right, that we reached 48 wins and that we were so successful last year. But it... It came at the cost of a lot of development for a lot of the fringe prospects. Like, mm-hmm. yes, we got a ton out of Scotty, and that was amazing. And we got, you know, some encouraging development out of Precious Achua and Gary Trent Jr. But those were our main pieces that we have to use in, in order to win. Yeah. We left the Lano just hanging out there. We left Malachi Flynn hanging out there, Justin Champagny, and like those guys didn't develop and now again when we need them we don't have them and nick is unwilling again to try and develop one of them like mm-hmm. you have to stick it out with either one of malachi or delano in a backup role i understand that we're going to get burned i understand that we're going to lose those minutes you have to let them figure it out because in game 70 maybe they figure it out and now in the playoffs, you have a reliable backup. And you don't play Freddy 48 minutes a game. You know, we lost to the Magic, and he played the entire second half. Hey. The entire second half. Why is he playing if we're going to lose? Rest him. 
there's too much chaos. No, but there's too much chaos going on, right? That's the situation that we're in. And I, I, I like to look back at, you know, when Fred did what he did against Milwaukee to help us win a championship. And people were like, nobody expected Fred Van Fleet. And it's like, well, yeah. Now everyone expects Fred Van Vliet because we're playing him every possible second we can. And you talk about the developmental needs and it brings me back to the earlier conversation you and I were having about how you can't really be successful trying to have a core and a second core and work them together, right? Golden State, quote unquote, proved it works. But Very they lucky. We know it didn't work. Exactly. You know, they run into Giannis. They run into any legit big who's going to destroy that team. They wish they had have traded Kuminga and you know um whoever the other kid is i always forget Moses his name. moody thank you Moses and, moody. yeah for a or gasol for a gasol like player who fixes that problem that the team has so it's tough the and, rappers need to figure and, out if it's scotty and og and crew or if pascal is going to work with the younger kids that's where we're at well like the thing is is we have got pascal and freddie and then we've got scotty og gary and, and achua and we're trying to merge those and create a competitive team with that. Yeah. And unfortunately, those two guys are taking up too much oxygen for our younger guys to truly develop and blossom into true star caliber players. Yeah. And so for me, what I've seen from OG when Siakam's not playing, what I've seen from you know Gary Trent Jr. and, and the other guys is we're not going to make the playoffs with them. Yeah. You know? If we trade Siakam, if we trade Fred Van Vliet, we're not a playoff team. We're maybe a fringe play-in team. That's not the worst idea in a deep draft class like this. With a Scoot Henderson or a Victor Wembanyama at the top of the class, you know, we're only five wins ahead of Charlotte, who's the last place team in the NBA, so there's still plenty of time to tank. If we trade those guys for massive assets back, we tank... And we get a Scoot Henderson. We get a top end p- prospect to pair now with Scotty. Maybe we can go g- give Gary Trent away and get a younger version of him or something like that. And then retool with that and have OG be your veteran. Because I think OG would is going to be a very solid veteran. And it already is a very solid veteran. And he's on a great contract for the next few years. That's for sure. He's, Bruh, man. man, this is the struggles, right? This is what the front office is constantly dealing with right now because this team has gotten into the place that Matt and I are so afraid of as NBA fans. The middle purgatory. purgatory of are we good? Are we bad? And Worst place in sports. This is the thing, right? It's the worst place to be. And you have to balance each side of the coin because, yes, on the one hand, if we didn't have any injuries, if everybody was playing up to the potential that they were supposed to be, if we had all of those shining moments from the beginning of the season continuing to go along, we could be the Cavs. We could be 17 and 12-ish, you know, happily in a currently good playoff race. But also, like, if we didn't have the jumps that OG's been having, if we didn't have the flashes from Coloco trying to do what he can do to be the only center that survives, we could just easily be six games below 500. And that is easily. not a place that you want to be as the fan base. So, yeah, we have to do something because where we stand it just isn't working out well i i think if you had asked raptors fans after we had gotten scotty barnes if if it was okay to be bad again for another year right like if we were going to be bad again that would have been the year last year to be bad again but this it's it's now a little bit different because we overachieved so much last year because we have a player who's an all nba player and those players don't come along very often and everyone in the media is like, well, you have to try and make it work with Siakam and you have to keep Siakam for as long as you possibly can. Um, I'm pretty sure he's 29. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just going to look that up right now. Oh, he's 28. He's 28, but he's turning 29 this year. Right. And he's in the last year of his contract next year. I believe so. So he's 29, 30 in the last year of his contract is he really the type of top 15 player that you go all in on in his 30s i don't think he is right guys fluctuate in and out of that top 15 so consistently in the nba julius randall that... was there at one point julius randall was a top five mvp voter right two years ago so you have to be careful about you know, the type of superstar that you're you're building around. You know, Kevin Durant at 30 years old? Yes, give me Kevin Durant. You know, right. I'll 
uh, you know, a guy who since he's been 18, you knew he was going to be a superstar. And now today he's still a superstar. Absolutely. But a guy like Siakam, who's had the up and down trajectory of his career, it's just a lot to and, bank on. And that's why I bring up Julius Randle, right? Because the guy is crushing it right now. He's been on like a five, six game stretch where he's putting up 30 plus a game and the Knicks are doing really well. But also, think about the season the Knicks had last year. Think about the consistency, right? That's what you're looking for in a true superstar, is that consistency to hit that level and stay at that level. Siakam, yeah, he's newer to hitting the superstar level. Yes, he's younger to the sport. The hope is that he is moving towards his peak still and not just hitting it. But when you look at Kevin Durant and you look at Julius Randle and you have Siakam in the middle... You know, like, he's not going to Kevin Durant. We don't see that happening with him, for sure. And then you also say, like, you, the hope is that he's still moving towards his peak. It's generally considered and widely known in the NBA that your peak is between 27 and 32 years old. That's kind of the range. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping that because he's, he's you know, a later uh, developmental basketball player that he'll, he'll get there. The thing about the NBA as well, though, is it's so predicated on athleticism. Yeah. And even though Siakam is a, is a good, a, he's a phenomenal athlete. Like he's one of the one percent athletes in the world, right? But for the NBA, he's not. He's mm -hmm. probably you know in the seventieth percentile. And if that starts to diminish, how much more development is he going to need to overcome that lack of athleticism that he's going to lose? Right. And that's going to start to happen. I mean, now, right? Like I get, you know, we've got LeBron and we've got. Um, Tom Brady proving that you know you can battle Father Time for as long as you want. I just I don't know how many guys can do that, and it's proven more times than not that Father Time comes and he takes you pretty quick, right? Yes. So I'm I'm not the type of person who's thinking that we should go all in on Siakam. I'm thinking we should cash in on his value right now. He's a top 15 player. He is one of the top 10 players currently this year in terms of his production. Yep. Go to a team with young players, maybe like Golden State. And, like, I, they haven't played well, but go get Kaminga. Go get Wiseman. You know, maybe find a different team. Um, maybe Phoenix is willing to give us Aiton for him. Like, you know, there's there's options and opportunities out there to, to see what we can do. And I really don't think that, that holding on to this siakam Freddie combo is, is, is a right move for our team. And mathematically, the logic makes sense because we're a team that needs to get better. So we need to trade pieces to get better in a certain direction. And if you want to have that piece be getting better from, you know, you're losing your bottom and getting better on the top side, we have to trade a lot of scraps. And we have a lot of scraps, but then if that trade doesn't work out, we have nothing and we're the Minnesota Timberwolves, except we don't have Anthony Edwards, like, talent on the top end, right? We got Scotty Barnes, who is going to be fantastic but it's a different story we have to look at our top end selling to make it so that our general middle gets better or our young end talent is able to grow to replace it so the logic is there for the siakam trade right the question now becomes what is the league going to find where are the raptors going to end out i look at this 10 game stretch that we have of tough games and if we do not have like a seven and three or hopefully an eight and two situation we probably should be looking to sell. And Fred's not playing great. Siakam is at the peak he can possibly be. You might be right on saying sell high when you can. And, like, at the end of the day, man, you look at our next, like, few games. we got the Nets, who are playing out of their mind right now. The Warriors, who, again, are the defending champions. Not that they're playing like it. The 76ers, who have picked it up as of late. The Knicks, who are doing what they're doing. The Cavs, who are one of the best teams in the East. The Clippers the Grizzlies, the Suns, and the Pacers who are better than us, then the Bucks, and then the Knicks again. We're in like trouble. Yeah, over that ten game stretch, like what are we gonna do there, man? Like I don't think we're gonna go seven and three, eight and two. I think five and five would be generous. Exactly. exactly or you reverse that. So at this point, like if you if we're gonna be that bad, you may as well go ahead and get rid of our top end players. Cause at the end of the day, as much as I love Siakam and I think you know, him and Fred Van Vliet have been amazing and they're amazing stories. They're the type of stories Absolutely. that you want on your team, right? Like the guys who were overlooked, who were underrated, who put in that effort and who gave it their all, their blood, sweat and tears to get to where they are, right? They're not just, they're not just talented guys, yeah. right? They, they obviously have a ton of talent, but 
they put in that work and that's what you wanted as an example for a franchise but you got to cash in on the assets when you have them cuz if you don't think that you're going to be able to utilize them to win you got to make sure that you reload that cupboard and we are the Toronto Raptors we can't afford to miss we can't afford to load an empty bullet into our chamber cuz nobody wants to play for Toronto like as you say a, man it's just a fact Otto Porter Jr our biggest free agent <laughs> signing in NBA history like oh Sad. He's, he's missed Very 13 sad. plus games. I really think that Otto would have been good for this team, but at the same time, what can we do now, right? The the front office has to realize so where we stand, right? That's the thing. There, there's brutal things. And if if OG is still young enough to fit in the timeline and Scotty is actually the future, like I haven't brought, I haven't brought this up yet, but I have to do it. Fred and Scotty have zero chemistry together. They just they don't work together on the court. And if Scotty is going to potentially have point guard duties, if that's something you want him as a role in our team, our main point guard, and him not having chemistry together, not being able to work up that, I just don't see how that's going to work together. And so that's why you talk about Siakam and trade, and I'm like, well, if we're going to do that, we may as well just go all in and get rid of both of them, unfortunately. No, 100%, 100% man. I totally agree with you. And especially, like, you can go the route of c- collecting all those top-end picks. Um, you see what Boston did, man, and everybody panned Danny Ainge for yeah. years for not making a move with those picks. But he l- literally pulled off the biggest home run in the last 15 years that we've ever seen. He traded back from one to three and forego the number one rated player that everyone was willing to take. And still got the superstar that was of that class. He got Jason Tatum and an extra first round pick. And people were mad that he wasn't taking swings at, at bigger free agents or, or yep. you know, bigger name players. And now they've got the best team in the NBA. And they've got, you know, I wouldn't say they're the best duo in the NBA, because I think that's still LeBron and Anthony Davis. If like they're well, playing like they are with right AD now. Playing the way he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but they're I would say top three. And you, I, you could argue Paul George and, and Kawhi Leonard maybe when they're healthy. That's true. That's true. They but did they just got, they did just shut Boston down. <laughs> but they got Tatum and Brown together. They've developed together. You look at what OKC had with Kevin Durant, with James Harden. You know, with that collection with Westbrook on OKC, right? Like, you get the talent, the true superstars. You put them together, and you say, "Is this going to work?" And then we we make it work, and we go as far as we can. That's that's the hope and. So yeah, maybe maybe it is tank season. I'm I'm still the fan inside of me doesn't want to accept tank season yet because I want to see us win. We've had so many good moments where we've had those shining bright spots, but when our record is at 13 and 14, those good moments aren't enough. We need great moments so that our record is way better than it is. You know who Jason Timp is? I don't. He he does hoops tonight. I think I've told talked to you about this yeah, it's on yeah, the yeah. volume. It's- the Colin Cowherd uh, podcast network. Mm -hmm. He, at the beginning of the season, didn't have the Raptors in his top 15 teams, okay? And I actually respect his opinion about basketball. He's a really smart basketball mind. After the first two weeks of play, he had us as the fifth best team that he'd seen in the NBA so far. And that's when we had all of our power, right? Like most of our power, except for Otto Porter Jr., I think. And... That's the the thing that I think is holding Masai back from really trading our, our players exactly. and like making a move is that, you know, if we are all healthy and playing at the absolute peak of our powers, we could be a top four team, a top five team in the NBA. We could be a legitimate contender. We could be a major headache and a problem for a Milwaukee, for a Boston, for a Cleveland. And there's that underlying bit there that's just kind of holding this thing together. Yeah. And I'm nervous that that over-assessment, that that you know, minor stretch of play, that small sample size, is going to hold us back from really cashing in and, and being able to get a championship in the next four or five years you know, with these assets. I mean, diamond hands are great, but this is basketball. And you got to consolidate your assets, cash in your chips when you have them, and hopefully you win a championship out of that. And you're right. That is the side of the coin that scares us. The other side of the coins is we've seen this team be in a situation before. We've seen Masai realize that his team wasn't good enough and make the play that allowed us to become as good as we were. Now, 
someone like Kawhi is not going to be available right now. That's for sure. But we have assets. We have Gary. We have Fred and Siakam if we want them. If you're not going to play Malachi, you're not going to play Delano, just trade them. Trade just get rid them. of them at this point so that we oh have players God. who can actually play. So that's it's going to be interesting the next few weeks. These next 10 games are really going to hopefully let the front office know what we are as a team. Like, the crazy thing to me is, like, you look at like a team like the Indiana Pacers who's, like, playing Andrew Nebhardt and, and Benedict Matherin and, like, all these other guys, and they're giving them all these minutes, and you think to yourself, like, do you think Delano could be, like, some kind of an Andrew Nebhardt? Like, yeah. just, like a, like, a light version of him on our team? You know, and we could use that for 15, 20 minutes a game to spell Freddie, to give him a break, so that he doesn't have to play the second half against Orlando when we're losing. Like, and, sorry, I'm going to have a friggin' aneurysm over here. You see, you see Fred's struggles, the f- struggles that he's having. All of us are questioning if he's got a lingering injury, if he's got something. I'm never one to want to wish an injury on anybody. But, like, Fred plays so many minutes... If he's not available to play those minutes, Nurse doesn't have a choice, and we have to figure it out with everybody else. I'm hoping Fred plays less minutes. That's just the simple fact. And you know what the thing is? Fred's the type of guy that's going to fight through an injury. Absolutely. Bet on yourself, battler mentality, the warrior that he is. Like, it's why we love him. It's why he's in the NBA. But it, it does hinder him when he is hurt, right? Like, because nobody cares once you're out there on the on the court, on the field. You know, you're, you're cleared to play. You're cleared to play. Mm-hmm. And the only other Raptors thing we haven't really touched on today um, is the Scotty slump that is happening. But I'm not aggressively concerned about it because I think that, you know, the sum of everything going on around is kind of affecting that. You look at Scotty's personality, you know, the the happy-go-lucky gung-ho guy that he is. I think there's a lot of negativity that's going on in the Raptors right now. There's a lot of disappointment and sadness. And I think that that potentially is, you know, building on top of him. And as the quote-unquote next face of this franchise, you know, might be getting to him a little bit in stress, so I'm not super worried about Scotty, but he's definitely been slumping, quote unquote. Yeah, I mean, you say that, but like if you look at the last two weeks of his play since we last talked, and like since we last had our real kind of conversation about Scotty, mm-hmm. 17 points, uh, 17, 9, and 3 against Brooklyn, 17, 14, and 4 against Orlando, 21, 7, and 4 against Boston, 13, 17, and 4 against LA, uh, bad game against Orlando, 6, 6, and 2. Um, and then he had 11, 2, and 1, 0. And then against Sacramento, he had a 27, yeah. 7, and 10 game. So, like, you say, like, okay, like, Siakam or Scotty has been slumping, but he's actually been much better as of late, which has been really nice to see for our roster. It's the trend upwards that we like to see, but it's still, the conversation is still looming of, we wanted this consistency all the time. But again, Scotty was also slightly dealing with injury. It's just such a weird season. There's just so much going on, and there, there just hasn't been enough time for the boys to just lock their heads down and play basketball without having to deal with everything else going on. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man, but it is what it is, and that's just how the cookie crumbles at this point. It's the state of Raptors basketball, but the rest of the league is, is, so is doing pretty good, you know? There's... I'm so mad. <laughs> okay, let's move away from the Raptors. Let's talk about the Pelicans then, man. Let's put you in a happy place. Let's talk about a team that's on the top of the league and crushing things that you are super pumped to hear. Zion Williamson led this team to a seven-game win streak at some point. Like, pretty exciting for Pelicans fans. Yeah, I mean, I was off the Zion train last time. I was like, you know, I was talking about how maybe he's never going to be athletically the way that he was. And man, show me. And uh, I lose a little bit of faith and this guy goes to the top of the Western Conference. Um, not that Ja hasn't overtaken him just recently because, you know, they smoked Milwaukee last night. Jeez, that was a bad game for Milwaukee, man. 25-point um, triple-double for Ja. Basically, in the first half, this team was up by, I think, 50 going into the fourth quarter. Like, Milwaukee just hopefully is going to erase that one off the board, and it didn't happen to them. Yeah, I mean, they were missing Drew Holiday, Chris Milton, Giannis didn't play well. It is what it is, right? Like, you just... yeah. You chalk it up to a regular season night in December, and you just move on, right? It, it doesn't make a difference happen. at the end of the day if you but make this, the playoffs. This Grizzlies team, though, is insanely legit, considering Desmond Bain has been out for like three to four weeks. Jaron Jackson only came back like two weeks ago. The three-headed snake of them haven't all played a game together. They're 19-9. and yeah. They're the top of the West. They're the cream of the crop right now over there. And Jaw is living his best life, I think, in the NBA. 
Man, yeah, they're having a great time. They were all snickering, laughing last night, doing the way with the yeah. fans and stuff. Like, but actually, at the top of the Western Conference, man, I I think it's the three teams that we really were kind of the most invested in, like the two of us um, yeah, with absolutely. Memphis, New Orleans, and Denver. Um, I'm really happy to see that. I love the fact that Sacramento's in sixth. Um, that's really making me happy. And you know what? The fact that Golden State's ten and Minnesota and LA are just right behind them just brings me a little bit of joy. Cause like <laughs> I was right about Minnesota, man. Come on, you had to get me on board, and I, I yeah. should have got you on board. I don't know it's, even how to think. It's like the Scotty Barnes take when uh, I got you off, uh, Scotty onto Jalen. True. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota, well, man. Ourselves, man. <laughs> Honestly, Minnesota is falling apart. It's chaos for this team right now, I don't even really want to talk about them because like th- this is, this is the expectation. You know, I was worried about Rudy Gobert leaving the jazz, trying to figure out a new system. And we talked about the spacing and they don't have the shooters to make it work. And you know, you hope that maybe cat and, and him could just like, you know, pass the ball to each other over everybody's head to put the ball in the bucket, but that just hasn't happened. So Minnesota's in trouble. Golden state is the more interesting conversation because with Steph Curry's shoulder injury that happened this week, they're probably actually in trouble. They've got some tough competition in the next few weeks. And as we've seen, without Steph Curry, they're kind of trash. Like, they're kind of trash. So they're going to be in trouble, that's for sure. It's it's so sad that Steph Curry's injury happened just as Clay Thompson was regaining his form. Clay Thompson has been playing oh. at Clay Thompson level basketball for the last two weeks. And, like, as an NBA fan, that's you know, something that you love to see it. You never want to see a guy who diminish. Um, and now Steph Curry's gone. We'll see if Jordan Poole and Clay Thompson can carry that load. Andrew Wiggins also a little banged up. Yeah. I think he's coming back soon. They hope they're, they're in trouble, man. The fact, cause like the biggest issue is that Wiseman, Kaminga and Moody were supposed to replace what they had lost in Otto Porter Jr. And in um, Gary Payton. Gary Payton. Uh, yeah. yeah. And they just didn't move at all. They yeah. ha- have been the same kind of players, which again, probably goes to f- the fact that they played very little basketball last year during the regular season. So, you know, it's really hard to develop when you're not playing kind of like Malachi and Delano, huh. whatever. <laughs> um, and now they're, they're, they're kind of screwed at this point. They're, they're relying on the greatness of Steph Curry. And he, he is like, we talk about Man. a top 10 player, easily top 15 player of all time. If you don't want to, you know, get into an argument about it, you can even say easily top 12. Um, Oh, he's in my top ten. Just don't ask me to what name my g- top ten. That's for sure. What are they? What are they going to do at this point, man? Like, ride Draymond Green? No, they're in trouble. And the fact that Steph was having like a historical season for himself is insane alone. But they're in trouble. And the last team of that bunch, the LA Lakers. I mean, Anthony Davis has been on a tear, and LeBron has been, you know, enjoying playing beside him. And at eleven and sixteen. You don't feel so bad looking at this record. Matt over here seems to think that they can still go all the way. Considering they were two and nine, yeah, they were two and nine, man. So that means that they've been what nine and seven yeah. over that stretch without with a LeBron injury, with an AD illness, like with LeBron and AD missing that Raptors game as well. So like, there's there's a lot of hope for this Lakers team. You just hope that they didn't turn it around too late mm. um that they that they make an, a trade soon enough to get the pieces that they need because austin Reeves being your third best scorer or your fourth best scorer you know, behind russell westbrook looks pretty bad With austin Reeves alive, wouldn't even get on the court for the raptors bro no, Nick Nick wouldn't give him a chance, that's for sure. He but. would staple him to the bench. <laughs> yeah, the, the Lakers have so much hope. It's it's kind of insane, you know, that they went from everyone just completely writing them off to Russell deciding, you know what, I will take that bench roll. I will start shooting great from three. They figured it out, man. LA is living their not best lives, but they're definitely in a much happier place than they were a few weeks ago. Bro, I'm I'm pumped for the Lakers because you know what, man? The Lakers, Nets, 
you know, final still still available, man. And I would love to see it because I just think that that's like classic basketball gods just making fun of us, you know? Just like, how you all thought it was last year, eh? No, 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 it's this year. <laughs> well, and getting a KD LeBron and the point that they are in their careers would be fantastic. And also, Kevin Durant is like the, the poster child of recovering well from an injury. He's doing so good considering that Achilles tear that he dealt with just you would, a few years ago. You would also have like, the, so not only KD LeBron, but you also have the K, KD versus Westbrook, the LeBron Kyrie versus Kyrie. Uh, it's so good, man. The Simmons and then you redemption got, arc too. Like it's a great story. Like, and Brooklyn is really Anthony Davis, out. you know, like putting a stamp saying, no, I do deserve to be a top 75 player of all time. Mm -hmm. I was not unjustly put there because, like, that's what everyone's saying, right? Like, street clothes out here shouldn't have been a top 75 players. But, hey, it's it's a wild time in the NBA because, it, like we've been saying over the last few years, man, the talent and the margins oh, yeah. between these teams is so thin now that even a team like... Houston, I'm not going to go to Charlotte, Houston, uh, who's the second worst team in the NBA, or even San Antonio, can win games, man, and they can win games handedly against some really good opponents. So um, it depends on the night, depends on how your players are playing, and it's just, it's fun to watch and fun to be a part of, man. I'm, again, the best part about the NHL playoffs is that eight can beat one, and it and it's not a shock. And so if eight can beat one in the NBA playoffs, yeah, that is nice. unheard of. It's, it, I think it's only happened once in the history of the NBA. Like, I'm here for it, man. I'm all about that. So We, we love parody. We just want the Raptors to be a part of that parody, not below that parody. <laughs> uh, you know, the classic fan base inside of us. But yeah, man, the East is in a wild place because like you, you, one week you talk about a team that is irrelevant and, and suddenly they're back into it. I mean... Brooklyn's on a four-game win streak. I'm pretty sure they were on a six-game win streak before that in between it, right? The Grizzlies have seven wins in a row and are just kind of taking off. The Knicks are on a five-game win streak, and nobody really believes in the Knicks, but the fact that R.J. Barrett and uh, Julius Randle are both putting up 30-plus points a game right now in the past week and a half is pretty exciting for New York Knicks fans. They're pretty happy, so... Yeah. Am I and excited no. Might be better than I give him credit for, because you know, Ooh. like at the end of the day, Dallas does look pretty garbage without and, them. Like Luca, and, Luca's averaging thirty three nine and nine, and you guys are five hundred. And Cleve, Clevo with his hamstring tear, you know, one of the few pieces trying to help Luca out. This Mavs hey, man. Oh. <laughs> Maybe Christian Wood will finally get some more minutes, and they'll actually be good. <laughs> He's not good defensively, Jason Kidd, though. Man. That's the problem. I understand, but man, just fuck. Sorry, excuse my language. Just outscore teams. They need something. No, Matt's super sad. I mean, this is the biggest Luca fan, and Luca, Luca is just drowning over here. Luca, Giannis, and Zion are my boys, and the Raptors are my team. And Zion and Giannis are the only things that are making me happy. And Giannis made me sad last night. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in shambles out here. Okay, man. <laughs> Get me some it's, antidepressants, please. It's a tough time for this guy over here. At least the Montreal Canadiens are doing okay. All Yo, Cole stuff. got two goals last night. He's got 18. He's on a 51-goal pace, man. That's all you got to get me talking about. I'm for my boy, Nick Suzuki, who's on a point-per-game pace. First time in his career. Oh, Slavikovsky's look better. He's got like six points in his last ten. Jeez. We're Let's go get far. Adam Fantilli or Connor Bedard, bro. Turn me into a hockey man again. Away from ourselves <laughs> over here. But, you know, Matt's going to have some positivity right now. For me, I'm just I'm, – I'm turning to be a Kings fan all the time. That's my story. I like the beam, except for against the Raptors. Hopefully not. They're Which legit. They I'm super pumped about it. Otherwise, yeah, this is an exciting week. Jose Alvarado broke the Pelicans' undrafted scoring record by being a boss. Jokic is doing Jokic things well, over there. Can we just talk about how he failed to name a certain somebody in that press conference, which was just peak level pettiness and hilarious? Because uh, Chris Paul kind of did that to him last year in the playoffs, and man doesn't forget, you know. Oh, absolutely, we love we love the petty rivalries in the NBA. You know, the little storylines underneath they just yeah. make everything that little bit better. But anything else you want to bring up this week, my friend? No, nah, man, I, I'm pretty sure you're good to, to probably wrap us up and or go into some hot takes, miss predictions. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to start it off. So we got a, we got a game in Mexico 
this week, my yeah. friend. It's exciting. You know, the NBA is doing their thing. I still believe that in the next five years, they'll probably be an expansion team in Mexico, which is a wild thought because if they get more respect than us as the single Canadian team, that's a conversation for another day. But talking about this game, we got the Miami Heat. We got the San Antonio Spurs. I think the Spurs are going to take this W. The last time they met, it was a close game, but the Spurs won it out. I'm looking for another W for them. And plus, Miami, you need to go down the table. We don't want you getting more wins. We need better standings for the Raptors. Hey, man, I would love to see it. Um, I'm going to go with the 76ers Golden State game tonight. And I'm going to take the 76ers, man. Um, Golden State without Steph Curry. Easy. This man getting his easy man. points over here. I made a really hard prediction last week. I was completely wrong. Come on, let me let me take an easy one. Man's trying to get tossed an easy pass over here. Hey, there's no Tyrese Maxey, so you know they're they're balanced out there. No Curry, no yeah. Maxey. Yeah, totally well. Yeah, Kevin Looney can handle Joel Embiid, right? Oh, come on. Sorry, sorry, that's my bad. Oh, it's okay. Right. His, his, his name's Kevon, Kevin, Kevin. Is... It's the struggle of life, but... Coming from a K-E-V-A-N over here. It's true. I deal with that struggle all the time, but... Anything else, my friend? Nah, man, you're good. Perfect. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. Check out theboardsports.net for new episodes, blog posts, like, subscribe, give us that thumbs up, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at The Board Sports. And we'll talk to you next time.